Hey guys, welcome back to some Guild of Guardians. In today's video, we're gonna be looking at the two best support classes that we have within Guild of Guardians. And of course, this is gonna be based on the free to play. Now a question that I get a lot of time is which hero should you be using as a free to play player? So looking at our lineup right here, we all know that Tavros is the absolute still really the GOAT when it comes to the support role, when it comes to the healing, buffing up a bunch of the teams, but also has a very strong heal. But what if you are free to play? What if you don't have the ability to come in here, drop a couple of hundred bucks on a Tavros, and of course, build them up a little bit further? Then you have two options. Now, number one, first option that we have is Flix. And then of course, we're gonna look at one more support hero. But again, thinking of the free to play aspect, looking at Flix, running through the skills and abilities, we have Fade Touch, all allied recover 15% of Flix's max HP. Now, very important to note, it is based on max HP, which of course, some of them are based on attack. Some of them are based on HP. So when you start gearing up a hero like Flix, you're actually gonna be basing it and really focusing on building out that HP because that is gonna be the trigger for the heal that this hero specifically has. Quiet Prayer, the lowest HP ally recovers 18% of the Flix's max HP. That is right, it is still based on that maximum HP. And then we do have the Divine Blessing. Every 10 seconds, all allies recover 5%, or excuse me, recover HP equal to 3%. Um, and you can see this goes down to six seconds. So if you really wanna make this hero work or this guardian work, you have to stack HP like no other. Now, of course, there is another option when it comes to these heroes. And the other option is Aquarius. So Aquarius, a little bit of a different build than what we see with Flix, because overall looking at Aquarix, um, or, or Aquar Aquarix, Aquarix, um, but looking at Title Blessing makes the lowest HP ally invincible for five seconds and increases their attack by 50%. Now this, of course, is very powerful because not only do you get the immunity and you can see at level four, it does go up to eight seconds, but with the immunity that we have in this game, majority of time when this hero specifically has that ultimate ability, it is going to go on one of your frontline heroes. So thinking of your warriors and your tanks that are gonna be in the very front line, providing that not only that invincibility, but also the attack rating buff. Now looking at heroes like Karuk or even looking at some of our agility heroes, that might be in the very front line and might take a little bit more damage than the tanks do because of the, the essentially the damage mitigation that a tank possesses. This hero also is very, very situational when it comes to a couple different game modes situational. Now, what I mean by that is when you start looking at this heroes in some of, let's say, the boss rush modes or the, the rush mode, um, when the boss starts getting really, really strong, doesn't make a difference for the invincibility because if you're casting a eight second invincibility in there, not only buffing up the attack, but of course for those eight seconds, you can time it well that this hero is gonna give you an invincibility. So essentially the boss is not gonna be able to take down your target. We also seen this in a couple other game modes that it is kind of niche if used correctly because of this duration and then of course the attack. Sometimes, however though, some of your backline heroes will take a little bit of damage. This will go on some of the backline heroes, including Desidra, and of course, a couple other of your very, very strong powerhouse heroes, making them immune, but also boosting that attack by 50%. Water Sprite, the lowest ally, um, lowest HP ally recovers HP equal 250% of the attack rating. That is right. So looking at this one, it is based on the attack rating. Looking at Flix, it was based on the HP. So there is really a clear difference. Now, of course, when you start looking at this hero specifically, you want to stack and really build up a lot more attack. Of course, you want that survivability aspect, but the higher the attack, the better that you're gonna get with this water sprite. And as you can see, um, it's converted into a shield for 10 seconds. So it can not only heal you, but it is also going to give you a shielding duration in there. And then of course, increase HP recovery to 380% of the attack. So pretty good. And again, you can kind of see the different build of these two kind of support hero classes because we have healing here with shielding. We also do have the immunity with attack. And the final one in here is the protective ward, which of course is just straight up defense. Increased defense effect to 40% for all allies, which means again, when you start thinking of a couple game modes that are really affected by the defense increase. So in some of the game modes, including the endless run, the higher your defense or when your defense gets buffs, it can be converted into attack, which again works well. And of course, this is going to be kind of the damage mitigation, 
when you start thinking of level five here at a 40%, when you start getting to level 150, 160, 170, the defense gets into the hundreds of thousands, which is kind of crazy. 40% boost in there is very, very, very strong when it comes to building out these heroes. So looking at these two particular, of course, and of the last one, if you're looking, if you're free to play, if you're early game, uh, Fru Fruila is going to be the absolute go-to. We know when it came to building blocks, this is one that was an absolute priority just with some basic skills. And you'll also notice that the rare have two skills, the epic have three skills, and then of course the legendary do have four skills within this game. But looking at the two, and again, when you look at Aquarius or, or Quitus, and when you do look at Flix, out of both of these, my priority number one that I would say to build would be this one right here, guys. Now I know not quite as much healing. However, the healing that is provided, the shielding that is provided is gonna make a really big difference. The immunity that's up there, also the protective ward is actually gonna give you a lot more utility with this hero. Again, it's not straight up healing because the thing is with Flix and what I found, and again, this kind of comes from experience, is when you look at a lot of the healing of this hero, um, once you start getting further into this game, most of your guardians will take more damage and take more burst damage, meaning that if the healing is not already there and if there is a lot of healing, a lot of times the healing can just be over healing, doesn't convert to a shield, doesn't convert really to anything, and your guardians go ahead and they, they die all the time with flicks. And I kind of tested this a little bit going through some different game modes. I'm putting Flix in a formation in the same formation, swapping it out for Aquarius, and even looking at the damage mitigation that they take from one game mode to the other makes a really big difference with the defensive reduction, which of course Flix can heal a little bit higher, but overall when it comes to Aquarius, they are gonna be taking less damage. We do have the shielding with the buffs, and then of course we do have the healing based on the heroes itself. So again, thinking of big picture, guys, this is the one that I would absolutely build. Now, as you can see, she is Radiance level one. She is a core one. She is actually a support hero that you can get entirely free to play. Also the Hydras and the Keepers, pretty good when it comes to an intelligence hero, which does work incredibly well. And of course, this game is super, super, I cannot stress it, based on how powerful and what gear you do have for these heroes. If you can go in here, if you can get some of the exclusive items for your epic ones, which actually do come out of the shop itself, making sure that you can go in here and pick up some of these epic gear. Again, this makes a massive, massive difference. Even right there is Flick's necklace. But when you start looking at the epic gear in here, this gives one of their skills a boost, which again can be very, very strong in the development and really the survivability and the utility that we have within these heroes itself. So guys, overall, my pick would be Aquarius when it comes to the absolute support hero, really the GOAT. And again, also fills a lot of niche, niche positions when we have some very, very high burst damage coming in there. So right, guys, so that is gonna do it for today's video. Let me know in the comments what you guys think. And as always, thank you guys for watching.